Hi. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Live with Singer Sewing. My name is Bethany. I'm an education specialist here with Singer. And today you're in my home studio and we're going to do um, some demonstrations and talk through our project of the month. But I want to give everybody just a minute to get on. We literally just hit the go live button. So I know it takes a minute for people to get the notification and get reminded to hop on. So I'm going to give you guys a minute. Um, while you guys are jumping on and, and getting into our live, please let us know where you're watching from. Um, I love to kind of see where everybody's tuning in from. So that's really fun. Um, just so you know, my name is Bethany. As I mentioned, I'm an educator for Singer Sewing and I am in or outside of Nashville and today I'm in my home studio um, coming to you live, um, but our headquarters or North America headquarters is in Nashville or just south of Nashville. Um, so yeah, welcome, welcome. Where are you guys watching from? Say hello. I'm tuning out, Maryland. We've got people from all over the world. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for watching. Now, if you're not aware, I write a project every month for singer.com. These are free project tutorials just for you. They range from beginner sewers to more advanced sewing projects, and it literally runs the gamut on the types of projects. I mean, we work with a lot of different types of materials and specialty feet and just everything. Okay, so um, if you're not aware that we do those, <laughs> um, you need to go over to singer.com. Um, if you go on the website, there is an inspiration tab, but if you go from your phone or mobile device, there's like three little lines. You click on that menu bar and there's an inspiration tab. And under inspiration, there's sewing projects and there's a list of them. And so every month I come on and do a live with you guys to talk about the project of the month and tips and tricks to be successful with that project. Um, we kind of dive in a little deeper on that and show you some different features of a machine that I'm working on with that project. So um, hi from Florida. I used to live in Florida and Orlando. Um, the UK, Ohio, Delaware, South Africa. You're in the, I'm, you're at St. Martin in the Caribbean or Caribbean, however you say it, but I'm kind of jealous of you right now. I'm going to the beach next week, so I can't wait. Hello, I'm new to sewing. Well, welcome. This is a place for you, whether you're new or whether you've been sewing for your entire life like myself. So I'm so glad you're here. Hello from Dallas, Missouri. Hello, hello, Austin, Texas, Miami. That's great. Okay, awesome. Well, as I mentioned, and I'll repeat it again because we have so many new friends here. My name is Bethany. I'm an education specialist with Singer Sewing. And today we're going to go over our project of the month. Now, if you have not seen our project of the month, um, as I just mentioned, I do write a full tutorial with beautiful photos of our projects every month. This is the one for this month. And yes, it's themed back to school, but um, it is a tablet cover. And I think everybody has a tablet, just about everybody, I think, has a, a tablet device of some type or one of the book readers, e-readers. But this is the tutorial. This is a free download on our website, singer.com. And there's past projects from past months are on there as well. So go check them out, download them, save them to your computer or your device um, and reference those. You don't have to print them off like I do. And at the bottom of the front page right here, it'll say skill level. And that's just kind of that for that project. What This is a very easy project, so only filled in one little box here. But like some of our projects are a little more advanced. And so I'll put that in there because I want you guys to be prepared for what the project is. Anyways, go download those. They're great. So we're going to be talking about the project of the month, and I want to show you one real quick. This one's kind of big because it's for my iPad Pro right here. But this one um, is a, I turn it this way because I put my social media handle on here um, because this is my personal tablet and I do a lot of work on it um, for, my, for myself. So um, I'm going to open it up. You just move the elastic over and it opens up. 
it's kind of hard to hold it and do it. It opens up and then my tablet's inside just like that. But I have like that big one. So it is, but it's nice because it protects it, but it's also really cute and it's personalized. So it doesn't get mixed up with my fiance's iPad Pro or anybody else's tablet in this house. So we've got a few. Um, this is another one I made as an example. This is for like an older generation or a smaller iPad. So this one's easier to hold up. It's got the elastic as well. Um, but this is some really cute little back to school fabric. It looks like a book cover, you know, but these are sturdy. These are very sturdy. And I'm going to show you real quick if I can move. We're going to talk about all of these goodies over here in just a second. So I had them all displayed so cute, but we're just going to shift them out of the way. I'm going to show you. These can actually stand up. You guys see that? Yeah. So it can stand up just like that. So if you have a kid, you know, that likes to watch movies or stuff, this, or if you want to watch a movie on yours, um, if you're traveling or something, that's when I typically do that. You can stand it up still. You can also flip it over this way and lay it down a little flatter if you want. So it can still be functional. You don't have to lay it flat, but then it easily closes up. And the other great thing I like about this design that I came up with is it's still open on the bottom to be able to plug in your charger. So you don't have to take it out of this cover to charge it, which is great. Um, so anyways, this is what we're going to talk about today. It's our project of the month. I got another one back here I made. This was my first one. This was my second one. And then I personalized one with our stitches, our font stitches, which I'm going to show you how to do today. So if you decide you want to personalize yours, you can. Um, I did add denim to this one. I do not recommend trying to make this project with anything thicker than a cotton fabric. Um, the denim is really thick and bulky. Um, and then also like canvas or duck cloth is going to be really thick and bulky. And it's not going to fit very snug. And it's not going to have like nice clean edges. So I only did the denim for the front flap because I, I kind of wanted to use some denim for this project. Um, but I didn't do the whole thing in denim. So you can kind of play around with it. Um, in the instructions, I want to make sure this is very clear. In the instructions, um, yes, I'm using my iPads as my example, but I did not give those measurements in the instructions. What I did is I gave you a very simple formula to be able to take the measurements of your specific tablet, whether it's an iPad or a Samsung or whatever device you have. It could be a Kindle if you want to put one for your book reader. Um, they're all different shapes and sizes and different models are different shapes and sizes. So I couldn't list them all, but I made a formula. So you find out your measurements from the website of wherever you, yours is from, that company. They should have the specific measurements of yours. Don't try to measure it. Go to the website and get the specific measurements for your generation, your make, your gear, make a model. Um, and then take those numbers. You only need three numbers, your height, your width, and your depth. And you take those numbers and you put it into that formula on the instructions and it'll tell you what size pieces to cut your fabric. You only need three pieces of fabric. So you're going to cut three pieces of fabric and then what size pieces you need for your chipboard. Chipboard looks like this. It's, it feels like cardboard, but it's stronger, but it does have some flexibility. So, and it's really thin. The reason you don't want to use cardboard is it's corrugated. So it does bend easier. This doesn't bend and snap as easy. Um, so you definitely want to use chipboard. I got mine at the craft store. They sell them in little bundle kits at the craft store and they're not expensive. Um, I made all of these projects with scrap fabric that I already had. Um, and they're, I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's a little ASMR for you. <laughs> they are sturdy with that chipboard. So I definitely recommend sticking with the chipboard recommendation in the tutorial, but you have everything you need to make one in this project write up. So I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks. Um, and I'm going to be working on our heavy duty 6800 C computerized machine today. Um, and then I'm also going to talk to you guys about an amazing bundle deal that we're doing right now for our heavy duty machines. And they're fantastic. So let's dive into, uh, let's come over here to this one. And let me just check and make sure I didn't miss anybody's comments real quick. I would love to make one for my Kindle. Yes, I think this would be great for a Kindle. I'm about to go to the beach, so I had to have one to cover up mine so I can read on the beach. 
You know what? Um, okay, so I just bought a new laptop, so I'm hoping to adapt it for my needs. That's actually really nice. Um, some laptops, because of how they fold and they're so slim, that I feel like you could make it work just like a book. So get your measurements and adapt it. But I, if you do that, please tag us in that, Shirley. Please tag us in that. I would love to see how you adapt this project. I love I love it when you all do that and when you take something that I've created and make it your own and improve upon it. That's awesome. I love to see your creativity. Thanks. Uh, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to jump back in here and quickly show you the machine I'm going to be sewing on today. This is the heavy, sorry, I'm so bad with getting these camera angles. So if I make you sick, I'm so sorry, but we're just going to bear with me for a minute. All right, so this is the heavy duty 6800C. The C stands for computerized. Um, so I love our heavy duty machines. I use them all the time. I'm going to go this way a little bit. There you go. So you can see all of it. This one is probably one of my favorites personally. I'm just going to be honest with you. I use it all the time. Um, it's, I, you know, if you've seen a lot of my lives, I typically am going to demonstrate a computerized machine because I love all the extra bells and whistles. Um, some people might find them intimidating, but I find them so helpful in being like very efficient with my sewing, having more options with what I can do. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of tricks with this machine today, including this foot right here, as well as, and you can't see these down here. Let me tilt you down. I can't get it all in there. This little feature right here, this is our decorative stitches. I love how they pull out and then they just tuck right back in neatly when we have two different fonts here. And we're going to go over those in just a second. And uh, so you guys can learn how to use these fonts and personalize your tablet. My mom says, hi, hi, everybody say hi to my mom. She's the one that got me into sewing and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. So hi mom. Thanks for watching. All right, so let's go over here real quick. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how to personalize the um, your tablet first. We're just going to do the lettering first. I think that's just the most fun part is when you get to personalize it. And I'm going to show you guys this one real quick. I'm going to move some stuff around. Here we go. So this is the one that I did, and I personalized it. I always get confused there. Um, and I chose to do the denim. You don't have to use denim to personalize it. You could put it on this cotton fabric as well on the front flap that flaps over. So you can do that. You definitely want to personalize it before you sew this in shut um, because you don't want it to go to the other side and you have chipboard in there. So let's see here. So what I did and whether you're sewing the personalizing it on to some denim or a thinner cotton fabric, you want to make sure that you use a stabilizer when you're using decorative stitches or the font. This is just what I use today, it's a tear away. But what I love about this one is it's just a, it peels right off and it's, it's sticky and it sticks right onto the back of your fabric. And then when I'm done doing my stitches, I can pull it off and it'll just tear right off and see it still, it still tears. All right, so you definitely want to make sure that you prep your material. If I didn't do this, let me tell you what would happen. My letters would still look okay, but because there's so many stitches so close together, they would end up getting like rippled and stretched and bunched up and the, and the fabric wouldn't lay flat. And so this is just stabilizing the material so that the stitches stay nice and flat. And as you can see here, there are some extra stitches in between the letters. What you would do is just go through and snip those out, okay? Pull any threads to the back. And then I like to take just some fray check and put it over um, all of the stitches, front and back, and, that, and let it dry. It dries clear. I did that with this, and it just prevents any of them from coming loose, and it looks all nice and clean. Easy enough, right? All right, so let's go over to the machine. And I'm going to show you how to create this sequencing. Now, we're going to spell something different for this example, but um, I want to show you how to do it. Every machine's a little different, and this one is definitely different than some of the others we have. Um, so I'm going to show you that 
you do not have to stitch one letter at a time. You can type them all in and then start sewing them. So, oh, you guys are the best for saying hi to my mom. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. I love it when she gets to tune in. All right. So to be able to switch between the stitches, and I am going to try to back up a little more. All right. Well, I don't think I can get the top and the bottom in at the same time camera time. So anyways, um, so this M right here is also, I'm just going to turn you guys down. Um, also here. So M1, which is what we're on right now, this M, M1 is right here. That M1 counts for these stitches right here. Okay. These are your most commonly used stitches, you've got a very standard buttonhole, you've got your straight stitches and your zigzags and stretch stitches and all that fun stuff, okay? So these are the most commonly used. So they're right here on the front and that's M1, okay? Now if I hit this M again, it changes to M2. My M2 menu is this top pullout. I'm gonna do my best to get in here for you guys, sorry. All right, so this top pullout, it says M2 right here in this corner. And so it has all these different stitches. And all I have to do if I want to pick one of these stitches is type in the number that's above it. So this first page is M2. The second one is also M2 because there's not another letter up here and the numbers just continue. So you have two pages for the M2 menu. Okay, so it's menu two, M2. Okay, and what's great is like, let's say I selected, let's do this funky one. All right, 084. I'm going to, well, let me clear that. Hold on. I mistyped. Let's see here. I'm going to type in 084. And now I've got this funky stitch. It shows the stitch. It shows me that I can make adjustments to the stitch with these buttons right here and the width and the length. And it tells me which foot I should use for this stitch. It recommends the correct foot. Okay. Let's see if I select another one. I'm going to do 020. This is a buttonhole with a little keyhole at the bottom. So this is different than the standard buttonhole, okay? And um, it's gonna tell me I can make adjustments, but this long thing right here with the letter D in it, that's the buttonhole foot that comes with your machine. So you can select different stitches. It'll tell you which foot. It shows you the stitch, which I really like, um, which is really nice. Um, so let's go back, let's go on back down here. Oh, I always turn my camera the wrong way. It's backwards, so I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to push those two in. We still have one more menu right here. I'm going to pull this one out. This one is M3 and M4. So menu three and menu four. These are the last two options. And um, menu three is going to be just a simple all caps um, text. And it also has numbers and different um, symbols. And then M4 is going to be like your boxy, like collegiate looking font and um, has all the same letters and numbers and symbols. So we're actually going to use M3. So I'm going to hit the M button again and it takes me to M3. And I'm going to bring you guys back up here so you don't have to look at the menu the whole time. And let me stop real quick. Uh, a needle that keeps unthreading after you set the stitches, please. Um, when you start sewing, you need to hold on to your thread, your top and bottom thread, specifically the top thread that goes through your needle. You need to hold on to that before you start and as you start stitching so that if you get a few stitches in before you let go of that top thread in that way. And then you should back stitch, depending on your project and what you're sewing, you should back stitch to secure those stitches and then continue sewing. Um, hold your top thread. Um, if you're doing a decorative stitch, hold the top thread do and get it going because um, you don't back stitch on a decorative stitch. And then um, as you get going, you should be fine um, if, as long as you hold that top thread. It'll prevent your needle from coming unthreaded. Um, so I hope that helps answer what you were asking. All right, so we're back to M3. And what I'm going to do, this one's a little different than some of the other machines I've demonstrated. So I'm going to show you real quick. Um, there is this little, <laughs> some of y'all may not, I'm, I'm older, so I totally know what this symbol means, but some people don't know what the floppy disk means. Um, that is a save button and we are going to 
tap the save button and it changes our screen a little bit and there's the save button right there and then it's got a zero zero slash zero zero and that you're like well, what does that mean oh you're welcome I'm, I'm glad that helped um so anyways um what this is letting us do is press in the number for each letter in the order that we want it to stitch out and it's going to show them here so let me show you what i'm talking about let's type in singer so i'm going to do zero two nine and there's the s it's going to be sideways because it stitches out in this direct like that it's not going to stitch across the machine this way um and it, now it says zero one of zero one okay don't have to do anything else. I'm going to type in 019. There's the I, 02 of 02, um, 024. There's the N, 017. There's the G. So we're up to four letters. Let's see, 015. There's the E, and 028. There we go. So we have six letters in singer. And they're all there and we can't see them all, but we know that we have all six letters, okay? Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to swing you guys over here so you guys can see. Um, I am going to place my fabric up under my foot here. And lower my foot. And I'm just going to press the foot control and it'll start sewing. But there's also a start stop button here. But it won't work unless I unplug the foot control from the machine and then it would start stitch the whole thing and automatically stop. I'm not going to do that because the last time I did that, I dropped the cord and it was a mess. So I'm just going to on a live. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to start sewing it out. I know you guys can't see it stitching up close, um, but I can't really see it either. Um, I can only really see like what's right down in front. Um, but when it's done, you'll be able to see how it typed out all the letters. And as we're typing out the letters, it's telling me on the screen which letter it's working on. So you kind of know where it's at in the progress. You don't really have to hold on to this, um, but you can if you want to, to make sure it stays in a straight line. Thinking of purchasing this. Thanks for the demo. Vicki, you're welcome. I promise you, you will not be disappointed with this machine. This is one of my favorite features of this machine, this little scissor. Ready? It cuts my thread for me. I get so spoiled by that. I absolutely, absolutely love it. So here it is, Singer. And there are some, um, I did, this was my fault that S got messed up because I didn't shift it on my end. Um, but I need to trim out my extra stitches and clean it up and then it would be good to go. So that's how easy it is to personalize uh, and use these fonts. Now, when I'm done, I just hit this little trash can until all of the letters are gone. And then I can go back to menu one. And there we go. We're ready to start sewing again. So it's that easy. And I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little demonstration. That is exactly how I personalized my tablet cover. So we have a couple of machines, not just this heavy duty computerized machine, which I'm using um, the 6800C. Let me see here. Is this a newer sewing machine? I don't know when this one came out, to be honest. I'm going to be <laughs> Stephanie, but uh, I have been using this one personally for over a year. Um, since I've been with the company and this was one of the first ones I, um, got and I, um, <laughs> it's my most used machine. It's always sitting out. Like I, you guys can't see, but I have about a dozen different singer machines over here that I work with for different things for, for singer. And this is one that I just always keep out because I, no matter what project I'm working on, I like to go to it. It's just so fast and easy. And, um, mainly because it has all of these extra features like the speed control here. So obviously I like to sew really fast. So I keep mine on the faster side, but if you're new, you may want to kind of slow this down. And what that means is you can still control the speed with your foot control, but it won't let you go any faster than this point. So like the halfway point, or if you wanted to go slower, you can turn it down even lower. Mine, my, all of my machines just kind of stay on this end because 
I'm really comfortable with the foot control. This machine also, here, let me turn this a little bit. This machine also has a couple of really nice features right here. And this is what makes so what your sewing project go back by so much faster and just more efficient. Um, for me, at least, this is all personal opinion, but I've been sewing for a long, long time. So this is the needle up down button. It drops your needle. So I think Love Loving Love Incorporated, you were asking earlier about unthreading your needle coming unthreaded. If you have a machine that has the needle down button, needle up down button, you can drop your needle and it makes it easier. So if you forget to hold that thread, it kind of holds it in place for you. So it doesn't come unthreaded so easily. And I just, mine didn't come unthreaded, but it got stuck in there because I wasn't sewing anything. Um, so this button right here, it looks like a little knot. It literally knots off your tail. So this is great for decorative stitches when you can't backstitch. And you can do this at the beginning and the end, okay? So this is a great little button here. I use this pretty often. Um, and then the scissor button, which I demonstrated, I use it every time. I know there's a thread cutter built into the side that I can just, you know, pull my fabric out and cut my threads there. And when I need longer tails, I'll absolutely do that. But I love the thread scissors, automatic scissors here. It cuts it so nicely and I'm not wasting as much thread and bobbin. Um, you also obviously have your back stitch, your start stop. Those are all great. And then all of your decorative, your regular stitches and all of your decorative stitches that we were just looking at. So all of our fonts and so many decorative. And this machine sews these very nicely. I know it's called heavy duty, but it sews beautifully. And you don't, it's not just for heavy duty materials. Okay. So don't think that you can't sew really delicate materials with this or even lace with this. So um, I'm just learning how to sew. I recently purchased a fashion mate. Awesome. We got a couple of people that have the fashion mate. I think I have one over there on my shelf and it's a great little machine. So congrats on your new machine. All right. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys is another feature of this machine that I really enjoy. And this is not the first time I've demonstrated this, but I love it so much. So anytime I'm demonstrating anything with denim, I always show this off um, because it's just a fun feature that I feel like a lot of people don't realize this machine does. All right, so um, quickly, <laughs> hi. Um, I'm gonna take a scrap piece of denim to show this to you. This is a very heavy duty denim. It's the one that I used on my tablet cover. And um, it, is, it is very heavy, it's not a stretch denim, okay? I got a big bolt of this for dirt cheap and I use it on a lot of different projects and I make aprons. We made an apron in June and it's on singer.com. So you need to go download that project. All right. So what I'm going to do is I already stitched, I folded it over once and I already stitched across here once. I'm going to show you what it's like if you were to try to hem a pair of jeans. Hemming jeans is so hard because there's so much material and it's so bulky. And by the time what I'm doing here is I'm going to create a faux so, you know, the side seam that's so thick and you got to sew over that. Okay. Or along the bottom, along that bottom cuff. It's a lot of material. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers of folded denim now. And it's really hard to get over this, but with the foot on the heavy duty machine, that's got the spring loaded foot. And this isn't the only machine that has it. The 9960, the our quantum stylus 9960 has this foot and our new 8060 also has this foot. There might be a couple others that have this foot, but I'm going to show it to you on this heavy duty 6800C today because this is, it's just satisfying to watch. So we're going to, we're going to sew this real quick. Um, so I already sewed it once right here. So let's just do it on the other side um, to make our, our two sides and then we'll fold it in half. All right. So I just have it set to a straight stitch. Uh, 2.5 millimeter straight stitch. You guys see this? All right. I am so bad at this camera stuff. One day I will, it's just backwards and my head, my mind can't think that way. I'm holding my thread right here. Okay. And I'm just going to, oh. there we go. Oh, I know what I'm doing. 
I still had it on the save feature and I don't want it to be repeating certain stitches. There we go. All right, so as I get to that hump, I'm gonna leave my needle in the down position right before this lip right here. Okay, I know it's a little hard to see from this angle, but trust me, I want you to see this little spring. Can you see that little black spring right there? My needle is down right before that little hump and my foot is starting to come up over that hump. So my foot is not level. When your foot's not level, it's gonna struggle to feed the fabric, okay? And we wanna be able to get over this hump smoothly. So I'm gonna lift my foot and my needle is still down and I'm gonna reach in here, so bear with me. And I'm gonna see this little, see how your foot's got some movement here? And I've got this little spring right here. And it just, and there's a little, little hole right here. It won't stay in there. You have to push it in and then drop the foot back down and then it stays engaged, okay? That's how you activate that spring, okay? Now you said you're, oh, I hit the camera, sorry. It's like right here in my shoulder. Still learning how to use my Quantum 9960. Okay, Gladys, your 9960 also has this foot. So if you're ever sewing over something bulky, not just denim, but anything with a bulk and there's a different change in thickness, this is gonna be helpful. So I've engaged my spring and I've left my needle down. Now I'm gonna to continue to sew. And as I sew, this spring now has engaged the foot to where it's the same level front to back. It's not tilting up in the front anymore. I mean, these parts are, but the whole foot isn't leaning up. And so now that it's flat, it's going to help me get over this bulk. And as it gets over it, the spring is going to pop out. And you just, you may not hear it because it's very quiet, but it just pops. So you might see it. And let's see here. Foot. I'm going to keep sewing. There. It just popped out. I don't know if you saw it. It was quick. And it allowed us to go all the way across this bulk. And then we can go right back down. Use my scissors. I love that feature. All right. So see how nice and clean this seam is? I'm so bad with this camera stuff. There we go. Right there. That's the other side. Now what I'm going to do is fold this in half again. All right. So I'm taking what we just sewed and I'm going to fold it in half again. Now we have six layers of denim and I'm going to sew over this bulk right here. And I'm going to show you, demonstrate this, this foot again. Okay, so we're gonna drop it. I'm holding my thread. And I'm gonna sew. See how it's starting to bunch up right here? Oh gosh, I guess it helps if I change my camera angle. Sorry guys. Um, let's see here. I'm usually better at this camera stuff, but today I'm just not doing well. Thank you for being patient with me. All right, so. It, see how this foot's starting to really curl up? I'm like a couple stitches away from this edge and I don't want it to get bunched. So what I'm gonna do is leave my needle down, lift my foot. I'm gonna have to reach in here. Engage the spring. Let me see if you guys can see that right there. If you guys can see that from this angle. There's this little hole right here. Engage the spring. Lower the foot. Sometimes it takes two hands to do that. It's okay. And because you have to hold that spring in. And then now my foot is level. See, there's a little gap back here because it's leveling out with this bulk. You have to get to the bulk so it knows what level it needs to be at. And then we can keep sewing. Probably should go a little slower over the thick part. But it is sewing through six layers of denim with zero issues. The spring automatically pulled, popped back out when it got to the same level. I'm going to cut my threads. Look at that. Look at this. Went right through there. Let me switch cameras. Look at that. It went right through that nice straight line, nice straight seam. No bunching of my fabric. Six like and it can do more than that, but and I do have a denim needle in here. I want to preface that by saying I do have a denim needle in the machine, so you do need to make sure that you are prepared for the project that you're sewing. Um, but isn't that little foot great? And isn't it, it could be anything bulky? So I love showing that off, it's such a fun little demonstration. All right, any kind of questions I can answer? Awesome, what kind of project can I? 
Um, you make quilts. Well, I don't know if you noticed, I was gonna talk about this last. This is our project of the month for September and it's a beginner quilt. So if you're already a quilter, this might be um, a little basic um, because it's entry level quilting to beginner quilters, but it's very thorough and it's fun. It's a quick wall hanging or tabletop or so, and you could quilt it in any pattern that you want that you're comfortable with. But we did something simple on this one, but I'm really excited about it. Um, my mom's a quilter, and so she taught me a lot <laughs> and helped me a lot. Um, and so I was really proud of how it came out. And uh, I think in some parts, this foot over here would have been helpful. Um, what is the bulk foot called and how do I know which machines use it? Okay. This is, I'm going to show this to you guys. This is what it looks like right here. It's got this little spring on the side. It's foot A and it's got a nice curve on the front and, um, it's called a general purpose foot. It doesn't have a special name. I call it the self-leveling spring foot because it's literally what it does, but it is the general purpose foot that you keep on the machine all the time. Um, I don't know specifically which machines come with it, but if you go to singer.com and you pull up a machine, you can click on specifications. You can even download the um, manual to really dive in to see if it has this foot. But I know that a couple of our heavy duties do, and I know the 9960, which is the Quantum Stylus 9960 and the 8060, which are two different white machines, they both have this foot too. Um, but I don't know which ones for sure do. I know more of them are coming with these foots, uh, this foot. Um, I love it. It's just fun. Do I always need the spring? No, but is it really helpful when I do need it? Absolutely. Um, so that's, that's what that is. One other thing I wanted to show you guys real quick and we're going to go over to this overhead camera. This is just something that I wanted to show you all to help you. Um, and I did mention this in the tutorial for the project of the month because I wanted you guys to be able to see, um, see this in person. Um, I just have some scrap fabric here. Um, and I just folded it. When you make this project, you're pretty much making it just a pillowcase and then you're going to slide in all of these different pieces of chipboard. Okay. Mine is too wide. I, like I said, this is a quick sample. I just, so the edges to show you this little trick I'm going to show you. Um, but basically you're just making a fitted pillowcase and you're sliding in a piece of chipboard, whichever size it tells you to, and then you sew along this edge and then you slide in the next piece of chipboard. And then you sew along that edge. And the thing is, it's tricky. This is the part that kind of can be a little challenging in this project. Otherwise, it's super easy. Um, honestly, I find the hardest part is just doing the math, but that's just because I'm not good at math. Um, is sliding, when you slide it in to this little pillowcase here that you've made, you can't see the chipboard. And you can, you can feel it, but you can't see it. And when you're sewing this, and I don't know if you guys can even see that line on camera that I'm making with my finger now across where the chipboard is, but um, you can't that you can't see it. And but you have to sew as close as you can to this, okay? And you want your fabric to be taut and smooth so it doesn't ripple. And you the the trick is you cannot sew into this chipboard. If you sew into this stuff, you will break a needle and you might damage your machine. And I really don't want that to happen. So this is my trick to prevent that from happening. Get you some painter's tape. You probably know where this is going. <laughs> and, um, and by the way, when you're cutting this chipboard, you're going to want a brand new blade on your rotary cutter. And you're going to want a straight edge ruler like this, and you're going to want a good mat. Okay. When you cut this, I had to draw a line on this one, but when you cut it, you're going to have to cut through like this pass two, three, maybe four times to get all the way through, but it gives you a really nice clean cut and you want that. Okay. Um, so make sure you have the right tools for cutting it. Don't try to do that with scissors. Trust me. All right. So we've got our board in here and I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape. You can use masking tape, whatever you want. Just nothing that's going to leave a residue on your material because this is the front facing, it's where you see. And you're going to 
line this up with the edge of where your um, chipboard is, okay? So now I know my chipboard edge is right here along this edge of this tape. So when I go to the machine over here and I have to sew this on, which I don't have my foot on here. Where did I sit that? I took it off to show you guys and I didn't put it back on. <laughs> it's nice that they're really easy to put on and off, isn't it? All right, so what I would do is slide this in here. Actually, I would probably go this way because I want most of my foot up on that board. And I'm going to start at the edge here. I'm going to try to get you guys in real close over here. It's hard to do from an angle, but we're going to, we're going to give it a go. My line may not be very straight, but the key is you're going to follow the edge of this tape so that your needle doesn't hit the chipboard, but it sews really close to the edge of the chipboard. The other thing I want you to know is do not just start sewing when you get going. Do not start sewing. Um, you want to, I'm going to hold that thread. You want to use your hand wheel and gently lower your needle to make sure that you really are clear of that chipboard before you start going. Where's my foot? Here we go. Whoop, I got a little carried away. And we're gonna put my back stitch there. And I'm gonna sew as close. And you'll see, let me see if I can show you guys this better. There we go. Um, I am using both of my hands in here. And the reason I'm doing that is not so you can't see what I'm doing, but it's because I am holding this fabric tight, okay? I wanna know that this is exactly where this chipboard is. So if my fabric moves, well then my tape's not in the right spot. So you do need to hold it tight. And stop. Take your time with this part. You do not, nothing's worse than almost done with a project and um, breaking a needle so or messing it up. So I want to be careful of that. My chipboard ends over here. There we go. All right, so I sewed, it's not the perfect straight stitch because I was trying to sew around a camera here, but you can see that I stayed along this tape line and it kept my stitch fairly straight. That was my fault. And now this board is secure and I'm ready to put in another piece. So if I wanted to put in this skinny piece, which you will have a couple of skinny pieces like this in your project, you have a total of five pieces of chipboard that make up the folds, the different shapes and sides of the fold of the cover. And so I would put this one in and there's where it is. And what I would do is just take that same piece of tape I just used, so no, let's not waste it, we'll just reuse it. And sometimes you have to reposition it a couple of times, but you can get it close. It doesn't have to be exact, but you wanna make sure that you're, you're stitching close to it. And then I would just stitch straight across here and get done with my next piece and then the next one and the next one. So I hope that little tip with the tape helps you guys be able to see where and know where your chipboard pieces are because that's extremely important in this project, not so into that chipboard. Nothing's worse than doing that. Um, let's see here. Yes. All right, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today, I'm gonna to fold this one down. This is the camera that I keep moving around, is we do have a heavy duty accessory bundle right now that, um, oh, I don't know if we've done a sale like this before or included this many items in a bundle before, but when they sent me the list, it is a long list of things that are in this bundle, like a really long list. And I had to print it off because I was like, I can't remember all of these things. But one thing I wanted to show you guys that comes in, in this bundle, is um, the extension table. This is an extension table for our heavy duty machines. And these are great because it'll extend your sewing surface. So when you're doing quilting or even this project with all of the chipboard pieces, it comes in very handy. And you just raise the feet 
I can. <laughs> you raise the feet on it. There's two more down here. And you slide it onto your machine. And you can adjust these feet by twisting it to make sure that it's nice and stable. Um, it does have a built-in a built-in ruler across the front, which is helpful too. So this is in this bundle. There's 19 items in this bundle, by the way. That's one of them. The other thing that comes in this bundle is our universal bobbin winder. So I don't know about you guys, but when I'm sewing projects, I get so frustrated when I run out of a bobbin and I have to start, unthread my machine, wind another bobbin, then rethread my machine. But what's nice is you don't have to do that. You can either pre-wind some bobbins or you can have that, if you have another spool of that same thread, you can wind them over here and not have to unthread your whole machine. Um, so this is pretty great. I love this thing right here. Um, I put it in the box so it would look cute on here, but <laughs> it is great. Uh, and then there's a ton of accessory feet. Um, let me actually see if I can't turn this camera over to you. Nope, that's not going to happen. We're just going to set that one down. This whole arm is just about to fall off. So we're just going to move that. We're going to improvise. There we go. I'll bring them over here to this other camera. I want you guys to be able to see some of the feet now um, that come with this accessory bundle because there's a couple that you're going to need for our project of the month next month. So I wanted to point them out to you to make sure that um, you were aware of them. All right. So here's a couple of them. I'm just going to place them out here. We're not going to talk about all of them, but I want you guys to get a feel for just how many feet come in this bundle. It's ridiculous. I'm glad you enjoyed my tips. I hope they help. And I hope you guys um, use the hashtag so, uh, singer sewing to uh when you share your photos of your projects i love to see what you guys make so i would love to see that all right so here are some of the feet i hope you guys can see all of them i know there's a bunch um there are 17 different feet that come in this accessory uh, like heavy duty accessory bundle by the way the bundle is 200 dollars off right now and if you were to buy all of these accessories plus the extension table and the bobbin winder it would be 450 dollars. so there are links in the caption of our live stream today. So if you want to go check this out and dive in a little deeper, I had all but two of the feet. So I, there's two feet that I'm missing from this bundle that I personally didn't have. So I guess I need to go get them. Um, but I wanted to point out a couple that I've used frequently. Um, so you might be able to see some videos in the past that we've used them for. This one right here being the ruffler foot. I absolutely love that they included the ruffler foot. Um, I love putting ruffles on kitchen towels to like jazz them up for holidays. It's such a quick and easy sew and I can make my ruffles exactly how I want them. And this makes it so much easier. There's no trying to gather evenly. There's no pinning and tucking. It literally makes them perfect. So ruffler foot's included. Um, let's see here. Uh, we've used our non-stick foot right here quite a bit. We used it in July for our, um, quilted vinyl strawberry handbag if you miss that project it is phenomenal and i still get so many compliments on that bag when i use it so um highly recommend checking out that tutorial on our singer.com but you this foot was a must-have for that project um i use these um the satin stitch foot the open um the clear satin stitch foot it has this metal um it glides real smoothly but it's got a deeper groove in the middle which allows your satin stitch to flow right under that foot as you sew and this is great for when you do an applique, which is absolutely a must. This right here is the darning um, foot or um, stippling foot for stippling quilting, but you can use it for patching holes and everything too. There's a whole really cool tutorial. This is a fun foot. It's like a free motion foot, okay? Darning free motion foot. Um, if you are a quilter, you probably are familiar with this foot if you do free motion quilting. Um, so this could be something that would be fun for our project of the month next month with our quilt. Now, two of the feet that are in here that I want to point out are your quarter inch foot right here. It's got these little lines in it and a single hole in the middle. You can only use a straight stitch with this foot. And these little lines are markings of quarter inches. So, and this is a quarter inch, or this is where your quarter inch is from here to the needle is a quarter inch from this edge to there. And same for this way. So this is a must for quilting. It's a must for, um, uh, piecing it's a quarter inch piecing foot is what they kind of call it but 
Uh, if you're a quilter, you definitely know about this foot. You're going to need this foot and this foot next month for um, our quilts of, um, that we're doing for our project of the month. Um, this is an even feed or what people call a walking foot. And it helps the bulkiness of the quilt as you um, sew it all together um, feed through the machine. So you have these teeth at the top. And then you have your teeth or your feed dogs on your machine. So they work together to evenly feed the fabric through. So while it's big and bulky and it can be a little loud because it's it's working really hard for you, um, don't be intimidated by this. It's really easy to use. It's just like, so you're sewing a straight stitch or whatever you want with it, but um, it's just gonna help feed the fabric through. All right, so. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that comes in that bundle. I, I definitely wanted to take the time to point those out to you. Some of these feet we don't get to use very often, but they're really fun. And they could definitely step up your sewing game and probably take some of these projects I do for you guys to the next level. And I can't wait to see what you guys make. Can you use any of these feet on any Singer machine? For the most part, yes. If they clip on like... Um, I took that other camera down because it fell. Um, but you know how, um, let's see here. These feet have this little bar and they just snap onto the ankle. These feet do that too. There's only a couple that are a little different, like these that have to go around the whole ankle and you just take the screw off and do that. But, uh, and this one too. But the rest of them, yeah, they clip on with the same way. So as long as your machine has um, the ability to attach feet in this manner, then it should be fine. Oh, my battery is low, sorry guys. <laughs> it's plugged in, so I don't know why it's not charging. But um, anyway, so if your Singer machine, what I'm trying to get at is if your Singer machine is older and doesn't have um, take feet that clip in like this, then no, these feet would not fit in a machine that's much older but if it's a machine that fits the, the where the feet clip in like this then you should be fine with it um if you have any questions you can always call our customer service just to verify before you make that purchase but uh yeah there there's a ton of accessories in here and this is a great opportunity to get a lot a lot of really fun feet um and just up your sewing game so great um, let's see here. Nice project and sharing of the accessory parts. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Great tips. You are so sweet. What would you recommend as the heaviest fabric you could sew on the heavy duty machine? That is a great, great question, right? Um, I just sewed through six layers of heavy denim easily. I have not seen how far it can go. Um, I should probably try it and report back. I have not tried that. Um, I know it can sew through quite a few layers. I just know that you just have to make sure you have the right um, tools when you're doing that. So it's not just about the machine. It's also about having the heavy duty or denim needle, having the right foot on, you know, having the right stitch or stitch length, um, because the thicker the material, maybe the longer stitch is better. So there's just a lot of variables, but these heavy duty machines, the reason they're heavy duty is because the entire inside is a full metal frame. So they are heavier machines, but they don't give any wiggle or jiggle. I'm sewing at the fastest speed and my table's not moving. It's very sturdy because of the weight of the machine. And that is part of what allows it to be able to sew heavier materials, bulky materials. Um, cumbersome materials, but it can also handle some really soft materials. I made this shirt and it's a stretchy double brush poly knit. And I think I stitched some of it on here um, and or one of our machines and it handled it just fine. Um, so you just have to know the right settings, but these are beast machines. Lots of great tips. Oh, thanks mom. <laughs> I appreciate that. Love that you showed the accessory package. I showed all of them, but two, like I didn't, there's two feet that I personally didn't have in here. And that was the fringe presser foot and the parallel sewing presser foot. Those two I did not have, um, but I guess I'm going to pick them up the next time I go to the office because I feel like I'm, I have FOMO. I'm missing out, the fear of missing out. Um, don't always know the name and use of the feet and that, and you helped with that. You know, um, sometimes I get confused as to what some of the feet are because some of them look very similar to each other. And you know what I do? And there's no shame in this. There's no shame in this, Benita. You go to singer.com. You type in um, 
the, you go to you, the feet menu where you can see all of our presser feet and you can just kind of scroll through till you find the one that it looks like. Or if you have an idea of what it might be, you can search for those names until you find it. But um, yeah, or if you bought the bundle, you could always reference back to the photo of the bundle on our website and they have them listed there. Um, but there are a lot. Now, the, the discounts and prices that I have mentioned today in the video are U.S. prices. So go to singer.com in your country and if any sales and deals there will relay that information to you but i think we have these bundles you know in several places not just the us so um when you are using the walking foot do you have to cover your feed dogs no that's a great question you want your feed dogs on the bottom to work along with your feed dog the, the teeth um of the walking foot and they work together okay well, not like this. They they both go this way, <laughs> but um, they're feeding. It's what it's doing is making a sandwich of teeth between your bulky fabric, and it's evenly feeding it top and bottom. Okay, so the top with the even feed walking foot, and the bottom with the feet on the feed dogs on your machine, and it's gonna feed it. They work together. Okay. Um, sometimes people use an even feed or walking foot when sewing with really stretchy material. It doesn't have to just be bulk. It could be just really stretchy, really slippery material like silks and things because it is sandwiching between the top and the bottom. So it prevents it from slipping and sliding. But we are going to be using it next month for our quilt project of the month. I always give you a sneak peek of what's to come to get you excited. This will be posted on singer.com and on our social media channels. At the beginning of sep September, I cannot believe it's almost September. This year has flown by. Um, but we're going to do a beginner quilt. And this is so fun. I absolutely loved making this. Um, and it's a very detailed tutorial. So if you're a beginner to quilting, I went into details of terminology and what things mean and what they call it. Quilting is its own thing. And it, there's a lot to it. And I really broke it down for you guys. So I hope it helps you. Um, can't wait for the next project. You want to learn about quilting. I have always wanted to learn about quilting too, Vanita, but my mom's a quilter. So I kind of let that be her thing. But now I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. And this was my, like one of my first things to ever really quilt. And I was so proud of myself. And if I can do it, you guys can do it because I'm not a perfectionist. Um, and you have to be very precise with your cuts and everything on this on uh with quilting and so i definitely appreciated that for sure all right guys i'm going to hop off here i will have to watch for the next page for the quilt yes so next month it's always like the second tuesday of the month okay so i don't know what day that is in september yet i'm not that far ahead but i always come on typically on the second tuesday of every month to talk about a project of the month and it's usually posted the week before so you guys have some time to check it out or maybe even give it a go um and then i'll come on here and give you guys some tips and tricks but i appreciate you guys joining me today again my name is bethany and i'm an educator with singer sewing and i appreciate your comments and in talking to me i hope this was helpful if you guys have any questions don't hesitate to leave them and this is going to be recorded it's going to go on our youtube channel as well so don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions we're always here for you to have successful sewing projects all right guys have a good week and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.